So welcome everybody to the summer school digitalization and platformization of social words. This summer school is the result of a collaboration, a joint collaboration between the University of Bologna and the Indian Institute of Technology of Kanpur, which uh, also gave birth to a research group with the same name, the Digital Sociology International Research Group. So the summer school will be on during all this week, so from the 2nd of May to the 6th of May. And today we have the um, pleasure to host, uh, to start the kickoff event uh, with uh, Professor Gillette Sarasam from the Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, and Professor Pier Giorgio Degli Esposti from the University of Bologna, and with a contribution which is, that is entitled uh, reflecting on, on digital presumption and digital money phenomena. Then we have a break of some hours, so this contribution will be of about two hours. And then we'll have, we um, will host Professor Stefano Spillari, which I think will join us in a few minutes, with his contribution uh, from Civic Food Networks to Civic Food Platforms from the University of Bologna as well. Then the next days we'll have many guests, which we are really uh, honored to host. We'll have Cornelia Han, Han tomorrow morning, and also again, um, Professor Sam with uh, Professor Jamuzek from the University Nikolaus Copernicus University of Turun. And then in the afternoon at around 5 p.m., uh, Italian time, <laughs> we have uh, Professor Chris Bale from the Duke University. After that, we'll have also on Wednesday, uh, Professor Fabio Bravo from the University of Bologna, uh, Roberto Barbeto from the Università Competenze de Madrid, Professor Montanari from the University of Bologna, again. And then on Thursday, uh, we'll have the pleasure to host Gert Lovink with a blended hand. Okay, we have some new hosts. And, and then after Gert Loving's event, we we'll have Martin Kenney from the University of California, Davis, uh, always in the afternoon. The last day will be with uh, two concluding events, hosting Cornelia, I'm sorry, with hosting um, Anne Kaun from the Southern University of Stockholm. And also, we'll uh, conclude the summer school with the contribution of uh, Professor Venkatraman from the Indra Prasta Institute of Information Technology of Delhi. And we'll conclude the event with all the summer school with a um, wrapping up things uh, conclusion uh, debate, which we will be pleased to host every participants in an open discussion um for a really um, insightful uh, change of ideas and uh, contribution so welcome everybody again and i leave the floor to professor de Posti and professor sam thank you okay good morning good afternoon for who are for who is following us um, from india and uh, i'm glad uh, of uh, having such an opportunity and uh, before beginning, uh, I would like to make a brief history of um, how me and Gillette met and how the whole project started. It was uh, the 2009 and we met at the UMD University uh, attending classes from uh, Professor George Ether, who at the time was uh, mostly studying the topic of presumption and uh, the early digitalization process, who was um, at the time literally an emerging phenomenon, considering that the big boom of Facebook and uh, the scholar digital platform we, we, we will analyze later were just uh, beginning and the boom of Facebook was, at the, was 2008, so just one year before and uh, like uh, the iPad and the, all the i thing we have in our pocket, the desk and wherever at the time were basically not existing. So from that time and on, uh, we started uh, some scientific reflection upon this topic, uh, 
on different area and uh, different uh, geographic context. And then uh, a few years ago, uh, our life crossed again um, and uh, we started this project uh, called the uh, Unibo IITK Digital Society Research Group uh, with the objective of analyzing uh, the peculiarity of uh, the process of digitalization, both in Italy and India, but uh, uh, in a more complex environment, I would say, because uh, Mostly uh, the idea of the geographic distinction, of course, they do have meaning. And uh, I mean, geography is a strong bound, uh, locality and uh, typicity of space are, of course, uh, very bonding and very important in our social relation, in our social context. But what is more and more evident is uh, the emerging of what may be called as a third space, which is this uh, digital hybrid space we are living and we have been forced to live because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But it was just, um, I mean, the pandemic was just an enhancer, a magnifier of something that was already there anyway, you know. So we become completely dependent uh, on uh, digital platform because of that, because in a, in a peculiar moment uh, in history, those were the only things uh, and uh, social structure keeping us attached uh, to our regular way of life. But also we realized that our way of life, our classical way of life, uh, has been definitely changed uh, toward the direction that, uh, let's say, mainstream uh, disseminator defined as new normality and uh, interaction between uh, physical and digital space. These and other reflection will be part of um, today's lesson. And uh, let's say those are the red line of the whole uh, summer school. On my end, I will discuss mostly about uh, the relationship between uh, consumer, or I would like and prefer to use the term prosumer, and uh, consumer platform in general. So I'm talking about uh, consuming good, uh, consuming service, and uh, other than that, of course, also uh, producing and consuming uh, value and content on digital platform. On the other hand, uh, Gillette will discuss and uh, introduce us into the world and domain of uh, digital money and uh, digital uh, currency uh, along the environment of uh, platformization. So Gillette, if you would like to introduce yourself and uh, of course, whatever you wanna say. Sure. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our summer school. Um, I think Pierre Giorgio has given a very uh, succinct sort of mapping of our uh, interaction with each other, which really started off in the context of platforms. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I think uh, some indications of the topics that we would be covering now, the, the seeds of that were already sown, you know, uh, when we started talking in 2009. Uh, and our intention in organizing this particular summer school is to um, really uh, speak in depth and get to know about the different types of work that not only uh, seasoned scholars uh, in the study of platforms are doing, but we'd be very, very interested in the kind of research uh, projects that you yourselves are focusing on. Uh, so really the intention here is to um, organize discussions um, um, in a in the fashion of a round table and um, uh, we hope that you know the that there are some really productive conversations that come out of the interaction between people who are experts in the field and others who have uh, really some very fresh insights that they're getting from uh, new research that they're starting um, and as Pierre Giorgio mentioned uh, he, today in today's session we will be focusing on looking at uh, uh, at digital platforms uh, and what we call really the emerging platform society. What, when we refer to digital platforms, what are we talking about? How do, how are they sh shaped and how do they shape uh, social interaction itself? 
uh, those are some aspects that we will cover. So we'll be discussing two strains, one looking more from the consumption side and the other looking more from the aspect of money. Of course, they're also uh, related to each other. Um, the other thing to consider is that, um, and I think that's the advantage of really having this kind of an international collaboration, is that uh, we hope that you will get insights uh, from a variety of different geographical regions in the world, because uh, one of the things that I'm sure you may have found as you started observing your own or, you know, starting your own research uh, is, uh, uh, you know, a lot of discussion happens on the, the new things or the big changes that platforms get into our world. Right. So the radical change that a platform is supposed to introduce into our lives. However, uh, and that is, I think, the beauty of uh, empirical research, uh, the more empirically grounded research shows us that there's also a lot of continuity. So platforms really um, interact with and in some ways uh, place themselves atop of existing social relations and structures. So uh, we are anticipating that, uh, uh, and because these social structures are different in various parts of the world, we are anticipating that uh, some of these connections and continuities will also uh, come out very clearly as part of uh, our discussions throughout the next five or six days. Uh, so I welcome you all and I hope that it's a productive session. I'll turn to Pierre uh, and he'll give you more details on how we plan to go about doing the session. Over to you, Pierre. Okay, can you hear me? I tend to switch off the mic uh, uh, on and on uh, when other people are talking, and uh, sometimes I just forget to switch it on. Sorry about that. So, um, as Gillet already said, uh, we would like to um, to have an open interaction with each other, and so uh, having uh, literally a class structured as a round table, so feel free to jump in, raise your virtual hand or physical hand whenever you prefer to, to say something and uh, comment something, ask whatever, and then we will try to drift the lexon toward the, the direction of clarifying doubt and reply to every insight that will come from um, from the classroom. Um, about, um, about today lesson, the first thing I, I think we should analyze and let me share my screen for, um, Laura, can you activate my screen sharing, please? Okay, because I have to, so I should, uh, no, okay, now. You, you should be able okay, to. I'm the host now, and, and so I could share, I should share my screen. I would like to start uh, briefly introdu introducing uh, the main notion, or I mean, um, the elephant in the room, we would say, and uh, defining and uh, discussing what platforms are, uh, starting from uh, the ubiquitous platform, the so called GAFAN that are Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and Microsoft. But uh, I mean, the acronymous may even change if you consider that uh, some of these uh, big companies, those of uh, big tech giant have uh, recently changed their names, such as Facebook is Meta and Google uh, in the broader way is considered as alphabet, but is I mean, it's not a matter of an acronymous. I think that GAFAM is way more than appropriate uh, in order to describe uh, the context, uh, the physical and uh, digital context in which we are living. And uh, what is important about uh, this platform, we named as ubiquitous platform, is that we are almost forces to have an interaction with at least one of them each and every day. Like uh, we are dependent on them uh, because not just because of our purchase, if we are thinking about Amazon, uh, also we rely, I mean, the whole university system on a global scale, let's say, mostly relies on uh, Microsoft server and Microsoft infrastructure. Such an example, uh, Microsoft team for delivering uh, virtual teaching or almost every 
uh, university email account is managed by this uh, uh, this huge giant of the IT. Facebook, of course, uh, uh, Facebook in a broader way, it, uh, uh, it's, it's the platform that manage by some extent all the social interaction of people on, on the global scale. It's Facebook, it's uh, Instagram, and of course, it's also um, it's also WhatsApp. And whenever you use one of these apps, you can uh, you can detach that uh, at the bottom of the app you are using is written. Uh, the WhatsApp, it's uh, it's part of the Meta company and so on and so forth. And uh, I mean, the point is that uh, those huge platform are the one through which we are dependent on uh, our connection and our interaction in, in the digital space. And by some extent, they also play the role of the so-called Verberian bureaucracy in uh, the modern age. Those are the ones who certify our identity whenever we wish to access to other service, whenever we wish to activate uh, what is called IPI, uh, so uh, the application protocol that allow the connection between two different apps and uh, allows the, tra the transfer of data between uh, one uh, platform and the other so uh, those uh, those subject those uh, that we define as platform are playing a very fundamental role in the process of um, identifying people but more more than that uh, i think it's uh, it's a matter of literally giving a structure a bureaucratic structure to the digital world that uh, that's the very fundamental role in a perspective that those platforms are playing. And uh, I mean, the, the main difference is uh, between the classical bureaucratic structure, Max Weber talked to us when he was discussing about uh, modernity, is that the classical bureaucracy, by some extent, uh, has uh, some pitfall uh, and has some level of falsification which is very hard to be found on a digital platform. Of course, you can always activate like a fake account, a dummy account in one of these platforms. For sure, you can do that. But what is um, definitely important, and I think we have not to underestimate, is that every time we log, literally, in one of these platforms, not, so not apps, but platforms, we literally leave a digital footprint of our activity along a server run by a private corporation. So we have to, on a broader way, discuss the fact that uh, the process of bureaucratization in the first wave of modernity, so we are talking about industrial revolution and so on and so forth, was basically managed by nation state and uh, these its bureaucratic structure nowadays the and those bureaucratic structure for the time where the ultimate advance of course of social control but nowadays things are completely changed firstly because those are private owned corporation and this is definitely a game changer okay secondly because uh, those uh, platforms have uh, very little, uh, let's say, way of being falsificated. I mean, a margin of falsification, of course, it is possible. But uh, the idea is, and I'm literally quoting uh, uh, Kevin Kelly when uh, he made the parallel between the internet and the global copy machine is literally related to the fact that those platforms are making copies and copies of our interaction between us and them. And that's literally uh, very important. I mean, those are also called the digital footprint and those digital footprint create an enormous value, literally an economic value and also the, uh, this information can, uh, by some extent, uh, um, 
let's say, help this company and other, of course, to which this company resell their information to deliver forecast model of behavior. That's very important. I'm, I mean, I mean, I'm not just um, speculating like uh, you know, conspiracy theorist or something like that. Stanford University recently revealed that uh, all these uh, corporation or this company have. A uh, very sophisticated way of doing research of our behavior, literally, even through the microphone and recording our conversation throughout uh, the microphone of our of our smartphone or of our personal assistant. And this is not by case that if you talk about something with someone at the phone or with your Alexa devices, that in the future days you will receive target advertised about that microwave or that fridge or whatever it is, you know? So literally it's, uh, uh, the point is uh, that this platform uh, are grounding a system of control, mostly upon the fact that uh, this system of control is uh, needed to fuel and enhance consumption, of course. And uh, by some extent, I don't want to take at the moment, a personal position about the fact that uh, this is good or this is bad, but for sure this is uh, something that uh, on one end streamline efficiency, the efficiency of the process of consumption. So like uh, literally it's the idea or the marketer dream of having uh, and mapping the desire immediately when it jumps in the mind of the consumer. So literally you can immediately find a path to satisfy the need. But uh, very lastly, before switching my slide and scrolling my slide presentation is uh, another reflection. Before I, I told you that uh, the idea is this platform uh, are setting up uh, a bureaucratic system and those are private owned corporation. The other peculiarity is that all these private corporations are owned by American capital. Okay, those are all global corporations, but all these corporations have their headquarters on the US. And that is kind of important. I mean, uh, there is a list of the most profitable platform and uh, just to find uh, a, a significant digital platform in uh, the top 100 platform on earth, you have to reach the 16th spot, which is Spotify, which is the first European one platform that is, uh, I mean, that is run by European capital. And this is also is important because um, at the beginning of our reflection, we talked about uh, the fact of uh, related to geolocation. I mean, geolocation and space is fundamental because uh, at the moment, uh, it's true that we are living a kind of global digital society, but uh, rule and regulation still belong to nation states, nation state or union, you know, European Union, US or whatever. And that's, that's is kind of important because uh, sometimes happen that uh, Facebook in a, in a certain uh, geographic context, it's ruled by a peculiar jurisdiction and it's ruled by another peculiar jurisdiction on, uh, on another nation state, you know? Point is that all these platforms, I mean, those ubiquitous platforms make great profit, literally exploring and finding all the gray line between uh, the national jurisdiction. So finding all the empty spaces in which they can somehow develop such uh, like, uh, according to the classical uh, Zygmunt Bauman metaphor of uh, the liquid society, finding literally as a liquid, as a fluid, an empty space of regulation and building their power upon that. Just to give you an, you an example, Google for sure is one of the best uh, advertisement com probably the ultimate advertisement company on earth but since a few years ago didn't pay a cent 
on taxation about uh, advertisement because they defined the, their core business as being a search engine. But I mean, the whole search engine is grounded on the fact that they are profiling a consumer as well as uh, it's, a, it's a minor platform, but it's, it's a giant on, uh, on the end of tourism, Airbnb didn't pay any taxes, uh, any property taxes on uh, the real estate market because uh, they put themselves uh, uh, on the role of just being on it and as an intermediary role on the market. But uh, fact is that uh, Airbnb took uh, less than two years to have the same number of room available on earth as Hilton hotel chain that it took 50 years of time to have the number of uh, room Airbnb reached in just two years. The point is that uh, platformization and the process of digitalization is a process of streamlining efficiency on at the level of the speed of light, we guess to say, if we want to quote, uh, you know, Fukuyama and uh, of course, the little. let me scroll my slide if I can. Okay, the second point about uh, platformization process, and that, that's very important, is that uh, we have three main feature of platform, or let's say three main kind of platform that are considerable according to what uh, is Jean Van Dyck metaphor of the three, of the tree. So let's imagine a tree, and a tree as a structure, I mean as a digital structure, is made upon three main elements. We have the roots, the trunk, and the branches. So let's see and let's imagine what are the roots. The roots are the digital infrastructure that literally adwire our, um, our context that allow us to be connected on the internet in general. It's crucial and is, is literally one of the most important uh, geopolitical element at the moment discussing and defining which 5G network Europe has to adopt as well as India, US has to adopt. Of course, US wish to adopt an American uh, owned uh, 5G network, but like uh, the idea of the 5G network as a fundamental infrastructure is definitely a core element in order to understand uh, the path that the development, the industrial development, but not just the industrial development, will take uh, a certain nation state or a certain context in the near future. Because I mean, those 5G network, as well as uh, the network and cables uh, and hard wires that connect uh, our homes to the internet, just to give you very few examples, are the very fundamental infrastructure of the modern digital society as these were the bridges, the roads, you know, the factory during the industrial revolution. I mean, those infrastructure was exactly at the same and play exactly the same role. The, so literally, roughly speaking, the better connection you have, the better opportunity you have to be in touch with other people being connected, making profit, having information, because information is power nowadays, you know? So that's the point. Then we have the so-called trunk platform. The, the Van Dyck called them uh, the core platform, or we can define them as uh, the ubiquitous platform we have seen uh, before in the slide before. But the point is that upon this core platform, literally evolves, uh, a wide array of branches platform that are the so-called sectoral apps and sectoral platform that uh, take advantage of the digital infrastructure provided by the core platforms and then spread into each and every sector of uh, the of uh, of human life you know like consumption, finance, news, health care, mobility, education, and so on and so forth, are all branches 
grounded upon the trunk of the ubiquitous platform. Just to give you a quick example, most, uh, uh, I would not say all, but most of the city municipality on earth rely on Google map about what is the mobility, the system of mobility the, of the public infrastructure, such as bus and, uh, and so on and so forth, because this platform already provide the best and effective system to track information about the traffic jam, to find uh, the earliest and the fastest path to reach point A and point B, and so on and so forth. The problem is that, uh, I mean, just to give you the example of the city of Bologna, relying on a private corporation infrastructure means that uh, for sure there is an unbalanced relationship of power between the private corporation and uh, the public municipality. That's, and that's a, it's literally a very important political issue. The debate, I think, also has to be drifted to the direction of what always Van Dyck calls about uh, public-owned platform. I mean, the point is, uh, uh, for sure, Google Map is uh, the best and the ultimate system of mapping available on earth, but it's not the only one available. There are also public services of mapping like Open Map, Open Street Map, and other platforms that of course are less probably less evident because are less user friendly, but they are taking a different, completely different approach according to the market driven approach that the ubiquitous platform are trying to impose us. Okay. So I want to skip the slide you have seen for just one second, just to highlight your attention to uh, what will be my topic in, in the second part of the discussion. So discussing about uh, presumption, the presumer is definitely a subject that is both, both enabled and exploited in the process of creating value throughout the platform. And uh, as I told you before, like platform are literally finding and exploring all the grace area between the jurisdiction of nation state in order to make profit and maximize their profit. More than that, what is happening is a process of what George Ritter defined uh, putting the consumer to work that was that began literally in the era of uh, the first globalization on the 1990 and uh, the mechanization era. So giving the consumer the responsibility of accomplishing small tasks that are not run anymore by employee, by but by consumer and this which is super evident in the digital society leads to what is defined as the process of creating user generated content user generated content are all the information we produce in order to feed the platforms you know our comment on facebook as well as our purchase history on amazon or our research on Google, as I said, are elements that are monitored and recorded by platform in order to make out and extract profit to their advantage. So that's point is that it's very important for consumer, and it's way better to say prosumer, which is the merging between producer and consumer, to claim for their very fundamental role in this process. Because uh, these people are literally the engine, the fuel of the whole digital revolution or platform society movement, in which most of the tasks we are accomplishing are made toward the direction of providing us a service. And this, this happened not just uh, on the domain of the consumption, like uh, you need to have a new contract with uh, your cable company and you do everything by your own throughout uh, a web page or whatever it is, uh, you know, 
through a link, uh, through a WhatsApp chat or whatever system and infrastructure the corporation decide to use. More than that, uh, we are doing and taking this uh, interaction also with very fundamental structure of the modernity, which were the bank. Most of us are more and more having digital interaction through uh, with their bank and ATM machine more than uh, with a teller and uh, talking with in-person operator as an example. And that's, and that is mostly what carry on part of labor, part of activity under our personal responsibility without any human mediation. That's, that's a fundamental transformation. We more and more are having interaction between platforms and we are dependent on platform. We are, and that's a completely other discourse. And I think great loving will find better word than mine to describe how much we are literally stuck on the platform. So dependent on a system of control that literally rules our behavior and uh, our interaction with uh, social structure in general. Lastly, I would like to emphasize that this approach is mostly connected also to our interaction with public administration in general. And, uh, you know, nation state, in order to a, reduce cost and maximizing efficiency, because at the very end, the whole and the ultimate purpose of modernity is maximizing efficiency, reducing cost, uh, and streamlining the whole process. The process of digitalization enhances this uh, this transformation throughout the use of the platform and the free labor of the prosumer, or in the other hand, we can say of the citizen, if we are talking about the interaction between a city and uh, the public administration or the healthcare system and uh, so on and so forth. We are more and more forced to perform ourselves certain operation that uh, in the recent past were run mostly by professionals. Think about, and just to give you a quick and rough example uh, about the COVID-19 pandemic and the COVID test. Now you can have your test by your own, take a picture, or at least this is happening in our region uh, from six months and on. You take your own text, you scan a QR code of the test with the with the outcome of the test, you send it to the center of, of data analysis, um, which control if you are positive or negative, and then you are allowed to go to office or whatever, or otherwise, if you are positive, to quarantine. But that's a very important element in the process of presumption and uh, in the process of merging uh, digitalization together with uh, physical world. These that you can see here are basically the basic reading on the domain of resumer literature. And I kindly suggest you to at least have a check about a couple of them in order to understand the process of evolution of the prosumer. I would like to say more of the digital prosumer. So we were gonna start from Alvin Toffler, the third wave, to George Ritter, the mechanization, Philip Kotler, and then of course the marketization of the prosumer movement, the Christian Fuchs and the neo-Marxist approach about the alienation, exploitation and the prosumer, Harry Jenkins about the convergence culture and the power of the fan as active subject enhancing the value of a brand throughout their labor and their passion the passion they put on the increase domain, uh, the increase activity on, um, on a certain practice related to a brand or to a certain consumer practice. To Lawrence Lessig and the remix culture, so basically the fundamental element of uh, the so-called user-generated content. To Jeremy Rifkin, the, the zero marginal cost society, coming at the very end to Bossman and Roger 
and uh, the early stages of the scholarly sharing economy and digital society, which is also, I think, a very likely form of presumption in which uh, the sharing is part of putting uh, and recognizing value of the free labor of the prosumer in the so-called uh, sharing economy manifesto titled What is Mine is Yours, The Rise of the Collaborative, collaborative Consumption. And uh, after this uh, broader introduction, I would like to give the word to Gillette or to anyone who has question, I will stop sharing my screen immediately. So if you have question and you would like me to stress or clarify something, feel free to ask or feel free to comment and uh, criticize whatever you want. I mean, we have to, to increase our process of thinking and reflecting upon those topics uh, in this section and in this lesson. If no one uh, wish to say something, I give the floor to Gillette that we talk to about uh, digital money in general, and then we have a debate at the very end. So uh, it's up to you. Yes, I, I would like to um, focus on uh, an issue that you highlighted, uh, Pierre. So um, you talked about the use of public platforms, also not only um, private platforms, to reach some services and citizens. But I was wondering, in the view of the um, citizen as prosumer, so in a um, towards a smart city in its best uh, perspective of accessible services and uh, uh, efficient transport services, etc., maybe the self-tracking by citizens could be the best solution in this way to provide services and uh, get data to um, yeah make the the city the smartest as possible. But do you think that this um, relationship between the prosumer and the public platform uh, will reach the same win-win condition of um, like benefiting from private platforms such as Maps, who already have um, good services and a, an amount of data allowing to a, a really efficient uh, relationship with the um, with the prosumer, the citizens. So do you think that this could be a kind of obstacle compared to a more long-term result with some public platforms that maybe need to get more data? Well, let me say this is a great question. And uh, I think that uh, for sure the, I mean, the political debate uh, has to drive its attention about uh, the, the so-called uh, clash between public and private platforms, which will happen sooner or later. And I think that uh, in, in the time of two years at most, this will be one of the most uh, important topic on the, political, on the global political agenda, you know? And uh, the point is, as you perfectly highlighted, that uh, the process of gathering data run by these uh, huge uh, private corporation, private platform has been super effective because it has adopted several tactics and strategy such as the gamification and so on in order to literally please exploit uh, the free labor of consumer. But then uh, of course uh, they want to make out money about that and that's of course makes sense from their point of view because at the very end those are private corporation but uh, at the end uh, for sure it will be there will be an agreement between public and private sector what i'm saying that is uh, that uh, on one end uh, at the moment uh, the balance between the power of the private sector and uh, the public sector is uh, completely unbalanced on the end of the private uh, platforms. And this is by some extent unfair. That's what I want to say. That's a very fundamental point. Then, uh, uh, of course, uh, I mean, I'm not a futurologist and I don't want to even be that. But uh, for sure, I mean, there is the urgency of a political debate upon that, exactly as there has been an urgency 
about uh, the so-called digital divide debate that arose completely evident at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. But I mean, uh, digital divide was already there. Eventually, even COVID-19 didn't happen. That, that's the point. And um, I mean, of course, COVID-19 was, is, and will be a factor even for the future. But uh, what I would like to say uh, about COVID-19 is that more than being uh, a game-changing uh, moment in, in the process of digitalization, which is, which it is what I'm focused on, is more a magnifier, magnifier about uh, the process of transition toward the digital society. That, that's a point, you know? It just highlighted and made things way more evident than they were. I mean, Zoom meeting and as well as remote teaching and so on and so forth were already there way before COVID-19, you know, that, that's a point. Okay, thank you, Laura, for, for your question in a way. Thank you. I, the point, I mean, I mean, at the very way, I, at the very end, I haven't concluded my, mm. let's say, comment, but at, at the very end is the challenge is find a way to rebalance the power between private corporation platform and the public platform, which at the moment are non-existent, mostly. You know? So you think that the, an option could be just a cooperation between the two? Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Do you have a question? Um, actually, more of an observation. I uh, really loved that you had brought in that tree metaphor from uh, Van Dyck's work because uh, I really think that um, for instance, the connection that is drawn between the public and private through the through this uh, you know, techno-social artifact of the platform is very important for us to consider. Uh, apart from that, actually, if you think about even the way in which different platforms function, the, actually, uh, uh, rather than platforms uh, in themselves, we can also think of the platform society or a platform ecosystem. Today, as you have correctly, you know, when we, when we saw that image of the GAFA, if you take a look at each of those uh, platforms, they are connected, I mean, to each other and also to this variety of platforms amongst themselves. So these are these bundles of platforms. Uh, so I, I, I just wanted to remark that I thought that uh, this metaphor of a tree is really helpful in trying to understand those interconnections, uh, which we should be aware of. Yeah, and I would add, uh, I mean, that you use the perfect word like the idea of platform ecosystem is definitely fundamental in order to understand how literally this system is spread and embedded in our context and in our life. I mean, most of the time we are literally interacting with platform without also being aware of interacting with the platform. That also is kind of, uh, it's kind of an importance because those platform, I mean, they play a, a very evident role in the complexification of our society, but also as they play also a stealth role. They are literally um, like in blurred space and blurred line, and uh, we have to be more aware. I mean, the, the, the awareness, is, awareness is fundamental in order to, to understand uh, the, the context that is completely changed. And I think that probably the idea of the prosumer in general, in presumption has had little success because there hasn't been the awareness of being prosumer and the importance of being prosumer. You know, that's that's very important. And the idea of the awareness it's uh, it's fundamental. I don't want to quote Karl Marx, but uh, what is missing in the digital modernity is exactly like. Uh, work of the world united and uh, the idea of resumer of the world united is not a, such an imaginable thing you know and that's for sure gave the opportunity to platform to explore level of uh, exploitation never experimented in uh, times before so that's those are my two cents literally for and my contribution for today Let's see if we have some, any more questions or comments. Yeah. 
Okay, looks like there are no question. Would you like to take a break or we're gonna gonna go straight? Whatever is good for you. Um, I, I don't know, I can do either. Um, should we check in with uh, everyone in the room? What would you prefer? Do we take a five minute break? Or yeah, I think that we have a pool function on Zoom. I found uh, something like that a um, few days ago. And so we can start a pool. Just give me one second. And we can share a pool about the uh, last one. Never used it, but uh, there's always the first time, I guess. <laughs> Okay, I don't know how to share it, but uh, I've created the pool. I don't know how to launch it. We could do a, should we do the, do the old fashioned show of hands? Uh, how many yes, people? Of course, the old school way is always good, but. Raise your hands <laughs> while we figure out the poll function. <laughs> I set it up, but uh, I don't know how it works. Okay, in the, uh, the event that I cannot see a lot of hands going up, then maybe we can just, you know, continue and power through. Uh, because I think there are very important continuities between what you have stated, Pierre, and some of the points that I want to bring up. Um, so, honestly, I uh, do not have such a, you know, beautiful presentation like Pierre. It's really, uh, I intend it to be a, a series of observations and really a discussion uh, amongst all of us. Um, but I think we can start with the point where, you know, this uh, discussion uh, right before us, where we were talking about uh, the idea of looking at platform society as, a, as really an ecosystem. Uh, so as a, a sociologist in my own studies, I have been looking at uh, both things, sort of looking at design and the intention behind these uh, techno-social systems. Um, and also how, you know, what are the user practices, which means how do people actually interact with these systems, okay? So uh, when we think of uh, the platform, uh, of uh, platform ecosystems, uh, one of the things that really comes across very forcefully um, is how over time what has happened is that proficiency in using certain types of money uh, by that, I mean uh, primarily digital money has become really tied into your uh, ability to negotiate uh, even the most basic of platforms. Okay. So, for instance, um, very strangely, today morning I woke up and uh, I, was, I, I checked my mail, and immediately uh, there was this message coming from Gmail and Google Drive saying, you know, you, you have to get more storage, otherwise, you're going to be locked out. And uh, what does it mean to be locked out of something like Gmail or Google Drive? You know, uh, uh, it really meant that uh, really the entirety of my years as a PhD student, quite a few years that I have uh, been uh, sort of, you know, teaching a lot of, you know, access to all of that data would have been gone. So, of course, I, uh, Pierre, we can see the poll finally. Yay, <laughs> we figured it out. Um, so, so uh, you know, so I said, okay, yes, clearly I want to do this. And uh, immediately, you know, I, I, in order to access all that and retain my access to my own data, I had to uh, figure out how to uh, pay for this, to retain this data that I myself had generated over the past, uh, you know, let's say uh, 15 odd years. Okay. Um, and uh, this is not a very simple financial process. It required me to be well versed with different types of the user, different types of cards, uh, you know, uh, different types of options that I could use to do this. Uh, it required me to be aware of the regulatory framework in the location that I am placed in, which is in India, 
because uh, you know certain types of financial transactions are not uh, for instance you know uh, automatic payments there is uh, certain types of automatic payments are allowed and permitted by the regulator in india and other types of uh, automatic payments are there's a there's a you know as a user you will have to go in and okay certain transactions and not okay certain transactions so uh, through this very simple example what i wanted to tell you was that uh, a certain sort of uh, competence in digital money is increasingly required when it comes to using a variety of different platforms here we've just taken two examples you know so uh, an ability to use digital money and to use this uh, one gigantic platform but we may also see that certain uh, you know as we were talking about the nesting of uh, some platforms with each other or within each other for instance uh, what happens when you need a comp uh, to access let's say health data or certain sorts of uh, public uh, health care uh, you need to be able to combine the use of multiple platforms okay so uh, and for that your ability to negotiate payments in these multiple platforms are connected to finally accessing health care uh, so these are some considerations because of which we thought that it is a good idea when talking about emerging platform society to start uh, looking at the role of money and what happens to money when it comes to platforms, uh, the emerging platform society. So to begin with, I think, uh, in fact, you know, if we think about, maybe we can take a minute to even think about how do we define what is a platform or even presumption, okay? An important aspect of that, um, maybe we can just go around the room and even think about it, is to see how uh, there has been progressively in platform society, the monetization of activities which were early not earlier not brought into the purview of uh, of the money economy okay so uh, here i'm combining the idea of value and its potential monetization but it certainly bears thought right so for instance uh, giving my friend some feedback about uh, let's say uh, the new clothes they wore uh, that's not something that was earlier monetized, but we are really through platforms past uh, being socialized into this idea that there is monetary value attached to this kind of a feedback, right? So when we talk about presumption and the idea of putting the consumer to work, uh, this is a way in which we are collectively putting many people to work and make, uh, and you know, there's uh, money generated out of it. Uh, apart from that, of course, I think, um, we also have to consider how um, the when we talk about money and the reason why I said that, you know, we uh, my intention is to start with uh, really considering different types of money. So when we think of platforms, I think uh, one thing we need to be careful about is not to consider only digital money. Uh, if you have been following our events over the past uh, year or so, uh, you would have, uh, you know, been introduced to um, uh, the work of various scholars who have done fantastic work in uh, showing us a, the distinction between data monies. Uh, very recently, we had uh, Kore Chaliskan who, uh, you know, gave a wonderful talk on that. Uh, we also, uh, the question of the translation of uh, physical money, which in a, you know it may be currency notes or coins, etc., into uh, digital money through the use of platforms. So, for your reference, uh, there is a, a really amazing video uh, where we captured a talk by Dr. Suniva Sanbant, uh, who gave us a, this example from Indonesia. Uh, where uh, she showed us how through the use of ride hailing apps, uh, uh, the drivers are expected to become human infrastructure which supports, uh, you know, they're like human ATMs, right? Where uh, you give in uh, physical money and through their own uh, activity and work for which they're never paid enough, uh, that gets translated into digital money. Okay? So uh, these are just some of the dimensions of the connection between money uh, and platforms that I really want to uh, 
you know, make you aware of today. Um, another aspect that we can consider uh, when, you know, particularly because we, we, we went to, we spoke about the point of uh, putting the consumer to work uh, is uh, this, uh, you know, this is more on the design end. Um, it's the kind of um, traces of yourself and the data that you generate that really become very, very visible uh, to a variety of stakeholders uh, when it comes to the use of your money. So for instance, we can start with a question, right? So let us say you use any sort of payment app. You're, you're, lo you're really leaving behind a lot of you know, different traces. Even if you're not even using a, a payment app, let's say you made a purchase on Amazon and you paid money in some way, let's say, you know, uh, some guy turned up at your door for in India, this is a very common way of doing uh, transactions. You place the order on uh, the platform and then the person turns up at the door for delivery and you hand over physical cash. Okay. However, uh, you know, a very detailed uh, sort of a, a catalog of your activities over the years has been collected and built up uh, in, in the memory of, of the platform. And very interestingly, also shared with, uh, with other uh, stakeholders. Can you think of who these stakeholders might be? Who might be interested in your financial data in this way? Credit institutions. Sorry, Abhiram, could you just speak louder? Credit institutions. Sorry, can you? Uh, uh, I was not able to hear you clearly. Are you talking with me? I wasn't saying anything. No, no, Abhiram. Uh, sorry, Abhiram. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. So Abhiram meant credit institutions. Okay. Yes. So uh, people who want to sell you credit uh, would certainly be interested in this guy, in these traces of your data. Who else might be interested in the traces of financial data uh, that is created through your interaction with uh, platforms? Apart from, yes, let's say, you know, there are banks and other financial institutions or fintech apps which want to sell you loans. Uh, sure, they're interested. Anyone else who might be interested in your financial activities? Uh, I don't know, maybe Amazon itself, just to know better the consumers and their habits and tendency to pay how much and... Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, we had a really great talk by Sophie Mutzel, who, who elaborated on this point, you know, so this becomes a, a data point for uh, the platforms themselves uh, to understand, okay, what kind of activity, uh, how do we really, uh, you know, I remember when I was, uh, once I was teaching uh, some PG students, and we were talking about the culture industries, you know, so such an old concept. And, uh, you know, there, there is this vision that was painted of how through the culture industries, you really can pigeonhole each consumer into very neat slots, right? The typology of the consumer. Um, and really something like the, the trace of your uh, monetary activity, what kinds of consumption do you end up doing or in pairs or even presumption that you end up doing, it's a great way to actually survey you know, what kind of demand exists for which kind of data. So sure, okay, the platform itself may be interested or, uh, you know, supermarkets, whatever, different sorts of people who want to sell you different things. Anyone else who might be interested in your financial data? What about the, okay, what about the state? Do you think the state would be interested in your financial data? Okay. Yes, certainly. The, your, your revenue points for the state itself, right? So, uh, uh, so if the state can, the sort of transactions that could happen through cash or, uh, you know, because uh, transactions on a platform are not only about cash, but it's also about um, 
documentation of the transaction right which means that uh, and you know I'm, i'm so glad that we have people from on the one hand india and on the other hand italy because you understand what i say when i mean that there are a lot of transactions in our economy which are not uh, which are sort of uh, for the large part outside of the purview of the calculations of the state what we often refer to as shard, shadow or informal economies so if these sort of transactions happen through platforms even if the payment is made in cash uh, it's not really the same as walking up to a, a shop physically and just giving them cash because when you are engaged with platforms there is a way also that the activity of the consumer is being um, is being tracked right uh, and that is all data that is going to be used by the state to know its citizens better to know activities within its borders better which may or may not involve people that it even identifies as citizens so for instance jain and gabor they uh, specialize in the study of accounting they have really a wonderful series of papers on uh, the use of digital money and the state and the kind of tracking that they have been um, uh, doing uh, you know also through the use of uh, platforms so really when we think about money and its link to platforms we have to consider what different types of money is are used um what other variety of uh, activities that get monetized um what are the um the sort of uh, translations of money that also come into play by this sort of ever expanding uh platform ecosystem that we are increasingly uh, whether we like it or not in some ways being attached to this also brings me to the point of um user practices what do we mean by whether we like it or not we become a part of uh, the platform ecosystem let me start by your own experiences and uh, understandings do, can you think of people who even if they don't want to be a, a pla- part of the platform society they end up being a part of the platform society just shops just to do advertisement and even though for example the owner of the shop doesn't like the idea of having uh, the data or an account you have to have an account for your shop in order to succeed at least a bit <laughs> yeah yeah that's a great example anyone else this could be a question about uh, you know uh, one way to interpret my question is to think okay someone uh, this is a question of choice right does someone choose to become part of the platform society or do you have no uh, choice about the matter the second uh, direction i also hope this question takes you towards is uh, to take a close look at the people around you and see uh, you know there are certain types of people we think are associated with platforms but really through uh, some amazing research that i've been doing with pierre we have found how you know conventionally some types of people we think are have nothing to do with platforms are also through long chains uh, part of the platform society so either ways can you think of someone who uh, either does not want to be part of uh, you know does not want to participate in platforms but is compelled to do so uh, we can start with that question so laura just gave us an example of you know how if you're running certain businesses you have no choice but to be uh, part of the platforms can you think of other examples yes kalpesh go ahead so hello yeah so i i think in case of india we can see uh, like the especially the poor people uh, do not want like it's not like the when other was introduced other so uh, that time it, it was not like the everybody wanted to be part of that other other and wanted uh, to have other card use their other card to access the uh, public distribution ration and everything but it was state who wanted uh, this people to be part of that system so i think that can be one of the example where we can look how the state is imposing certain platforms in people's life yeah so when we think of public platforms for instance are they necessarily you know i loved peer's talk where he said i don't want to start the conversation with 
is this good or is this bad so for instance even when we talk about public platforms is it necessarily uh, going to be beneficial for the citizen that's something that we have to consider right um for instance i mean you know so let's move the conversation beyond is this good or is this bad so i think it helps us to see the detail on the ground back uh, for instance uh, all of us i think uh, by now have heard of covid 19 and the vaccinations whether we want it or not uh, the vaccination drives around covid 19 right so um uh, if you think of how uh, you have uh, i'm assuming at least some of you have gotten vaccinations done um in india it is uh, you know uh, you can book for these vaccinations on a public platform okay they also have walk in centers where people of varying ages uh, particularly the elderly can walk in and uh, or people in rural areas can just walk into vaccination centers and get the vaccine now whether or not uh, irrespective of the way you chose to do this the trace of your vaccination is going to be part of that larger uh, health platform that the state has right so that could be another way in which we think of um people uh, you know how do people really get drawn into the platform uh, society whether they like it or not right and now because vaccination is going to be, it's it's turning towards the paid category of vaccinations that's a great intersection actually uh, sorry kalpesh you were going to add no, something no no i just wanted to at one point uh, like for instance the use of arogya setu app like if you want to travel by air through railways you need to have a arogya setu app installed in your phone and you need to upload update your covid vaccination details and everything then you can travel so that is also one way in one way we can see the question of choice whether uh, do i have a choice or it's like i have to do this i have to install this and uh, to make some some travels yeah yes so again the the uh, you know uh, how what are you as a data subject whether or not you formally choose to associate associate yourself with the platform uh, really is the question uh, is the is the thing that we need to think about uh, right uh, abiram you wanted to add something no i'm just uh, like through gamification also uh, this uh, like we are drawn into the platform so i just wanted to mention that point can you so elaborate like- this a little bit because i yes. was going to come to gamification where if it's going in that direction great yeah yes ma'am uh, so it's not like uh, uh, kalpesh mentioned the uh, point of choice so uh, by giving an opportunity to earn money through installing this platforms also draws people like by choice mm-hmm. also people get into this like it's not uh, we are forced into it like we have some opportunity of choice also like in case of other platforms like uh, google pay or phone pay which like uh, if we like there is an option like if we share to five people and they install this app you will get 250 rupees and all mm-hmm. so uh, it it allows uh, an opportunity as well for like uh, sharing it with your social connections and then earning a money Mm-hmm. people by choice also say like uh, get into this platforms yes uh, okay uh, maybe choice was not the wisest uh, thing you know because it's never as simple as uh, you know free will i'm not a big believer in free will also uh, but um, i think the the more appropriate uh, term that we can think of really is what is happening at the level of users you know uh, so this example that you gave is such a great example right uh so if you get uh, five people more on to uh, to sign on to google pay through giving a reference uh or we can take a different example let's say uh you get uh you know five uh, of your friends to join in uh, and work for zomato or uber then you're going to get uh, money right uh these are so this aspect of gamification is actually a very important one but uh, here we can consider uh the kind of i would say um some sort of strategic maneuvering that people do as part of their everyday negotiations and engagements with platforms 
uh, and the way in which money will will come into the picture right uh, so are people going to be completely um, you know it's that old uh, weberian image of the iron cage are we really locked in and uh, we have no choice about how we are going to engage with the platform society or do people in their own ways try to uh, game a different sort of gamification but do they try to game uh, the final particularly the financial aspects of uh, platforms um, so that is something that we uh, should consider i think when we when we also take a look at this from the perspective of the users for instance you know we we in, in different ways um, uh, i have drawn your attention to uh, the design of these platforms and how uh, the idea is that uh, you uh, you know user data is valuable okay uh, through zoom of so even the the talk that uh, mutsil gave uh, we are not only the generators of data, but really uh, the data that we generate on platforms is going to be, uh, you know, the design is such that they will be used to uh, control us or control our activities going ahead in the future. Have you paid the loan, uh, the installment on your car? And that will determine, okay, can you even drive that car or not, right? Or are you going to get your next installment? So it's it's uh, really uh, that sort of wonderful interconnectedness uh, and uh, uh, the clever interconnectedness that we can see in the design of platforms. On the other hand, when it comes to financial platforms, for instance, uh, there is a, there's a certain kind of um, valence, which means watching that users themselves prefer, right? So for instance, um, uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, we have instances where uh, people like to use, uh, you know, Google Pay or some sort of a, an, uh, a platform which will um, help them deal with digital money uh, for the specific con convenience that it will help them budget better. Okay, so when we when we speak about being watched through our financial activities on platforms. In some cases, that kind of watching is something that uh, users themselves would like, right? So in some ways, it is a kind of self-watching that you're directing yourself to. Uh, and there is also really amazing work on that kind of, uh, on the use of uh, platforms and money for this kind of budgeting, everyday budgeting that happens uh, at the level of individuals or at the level of households. Um, I think um, because we have spoken about gamification and money, I would quickly, I think, want to speak a little bit about the question of, um, okay, so when we think of uh, platforms and the connection to money, one of the main uh, reasons why we uh, chose to actually include it in this uh, discussion on emerging platform uh, societies was the way in which it socialized people into the use of certain types of money, right? So the idea is that as we, um, uh, it's a two-way sort of process. As you have, you gain certain competences in the use of digital money, you may be better socialized into using different types of platforms, or it could be that. Uh, through using digital platforms, you become comfortable enough that you start to use uh, different types of money. So that kind of uh, socialization is certainly something that uh, we are thinking of. Um, and across the world, uh, in various parts, uh, in various countries, you will also see that there is a very interesting push towards um, uh, you know, in various parts of the world, I think the common term that will be used is financial inclusion. Right. Uh, so the idea is that um, a lot, uh, there are still many people who are not part of formal financial structures or the platform economy. And really, through the use of uh, financial platforms, we can really bring them into the, in, into the fold of people who are part of formal financial structures. Um, now, the point I want to make here is that. Um, I'm hoping that some of our discussions through the week also enable us to look at this category of financial inclusion much more clearly. Uh, you know, so 
soon the question will become uh, not whether you are included in the emerging platform society or as a financial subject in this emerging platform society, but what are the conditions of your inclusion? Right. So uh, because, of course, you know, uh, um, the sort of uh, if you are really this, you are really the product in Zuboff's word, right, words. Right. So if you are the product, then clearly there is going to be an effort to draw you in as much as possible. So the question, again, as Pierre said, it's not a question of the digital divide. There are some people who are outside the platform society or outside uh, the, the fold of the formal banking system. But the terms on which you are included and what are the plans uh, for uh, what to do once you are included in the system. Okay, So I'm hoping that some of these observations will help you think a little bit about uh, exactly how are you included, uh, what happens when you become included into the emerging platform society. Um, another question that you can think of is, do people um, act exactly in the way platforms are designed for them to act or are there, are there other ways in which they uh, they create a little wiggle room for themselves that may be you know uh, something as simple as sharing your netflix password with 10 friends okay uh, or or it could be other acts of i would not want to call it resistance but um, just draw attention to the need to study uh, the way in which people engage with platforms uh, in greater empirical detail. Uh, I'll stop here uh, now and I would uh, be happy to take on any questions or, or comments that we can use to take the conversation forward. Yeah, I have just a um, reflection when you were um, talking about the tracing transaction interest for the state, so who's interested in tracing the, dates, the data, et cetera. And I was thinking about, and also obviously the platform inclusion uh, from the financial side. I was thinking about um, during COVID in Italy, there was this uh, initiative of the state of the cashback. So um, doing electronic payments to be traced. Uh, so also in order to avoid um, the evasion of taxes, etc., you'd be rewarded with a, a percentage. And also those who would have done more uh, transactions in this way would have had a, an even greater reward. And I think that um, I was just thinking when you talked about the platform inclusion and the conditions that maybe that was the greater moment of interaction by Italian citizens with a um, like public administration uh, platform, because we are not so used in that sense, actually, there, there are some obstacles right now. But yeah, that, that moment maybe was the greater interaction by the citizens with a financial institution platform from the state. So this blurring of uh, services and digital payments was really linked to a relationship with the state uh, through a platform that you could access only with a digital identity recognized by all the uh, state institutions. So I was just this um, burning to my mind when you talked about uh, platform ecosystem with the financial trans transactions, etc. Thank you, Lara. I think that's a great example, you know, because um, uh, if really like uh, conventionally we think of gamification as this evil uh, plot by corporates to get at you, but really the this practice is really spread out so extensively. Uh, and also, uh, you know, how does, uh, and that's the reason why I hesitate to really use the term choice, mm. you know? So uh, would you want to be, would you not want to be, under what conditions are you enticed into becoming part of the platform ecosystem? Uh, but thanks, I think that is a really great example. Thank you. Uh, Pierre? <laughs> Pierre, you have something to add here? Yeah, I have a question. Thank you, Gillette, for your interesting uh, debate. And I would like to ask you uh, further information about uh, 
the idea of share you you're talking about the fact that uh, people are sharing uh, their account uh, like netflix account and so on and so forth uh, let's say mostly it's uh, it's the idea of um, mutual cooperation of users uh, literally finding the the gray area that the platform are using on the macro scale People are using, uh, let's say, on the micro on the micro level, taking some personal advantage and uh, using creativity in in the spaces that are left there for um, their own availability. And uh, by some extent, I think that uh, we have also to reflect about the fact that uh, this uh, opportunity of sharing, uh, you know, your password is also kind of a marketing move uh, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more time will go on, the less there will be such opportunity for for users to. But for sure, I mean, users will find um, will find other way and creative way to uh, to find tricks and uh, process of adoption of uh, technology. But uh, the point is related to the process, let's say, of sharing account. Uh, and uh, the fact that there are there is a parallel process. On one end, we have uh, a structured and formalized way of doing that, and I'm talking about corporation society doing that uh, for purpose and even for profit. And I'm thinking about like together price, that, which is a platform which is very popular and give you the opportunity of get, getting in touch with people and then literally and technically split the bill. And so we have those, uh, let's say, formal approach. And on the other end, the informal approach. So let's say the human-driven approach, that is the, literally the, the in-person sharing of account. And on the other end, the algorithmic approach. So the institutionalized one made out uh, from platform. Have you some insight about that? Yeah, I actually uh, tend to think of these as a, a, almost like a feedback loop. Because I think over the past couple of years, the different papers that we've been thinking about, uh, for instance, you know, uh, I remember in 2020 when we did the work uh, where we were looking at how elderly uh, had started to become part of the platform society in Bologna and in Kolkata. Uh, we found that, you know, people would uh, ask neighbors for help when it came to the use of platforms. Uh, and very soon, I mean, I think maybe as we were writing that paper, suddenly, you know, we see that Amazon has created this uh, option for you, you know. So if a delivery comes, would you like for it to be uh, kept with your neighbor, you know. So I really think that this is, and similarly, of course, also with, uh, you know, password sharing or, uh, uh, or uh, you know, maybe platforms which help you, financial platforms which say, okay, we'll help you with splitting the bill, right? I really think that uh, it's important for us to look at these user practices, not only out of sociological interest, but because these practices become the stuff of corporate uh, policy, you know, in the near future. So uh, for any student of platforms, I think it would be interesting to keep an eye on what uh, user practices are and how they become in some ways uh, incorporated into the platform society uh, very, very soon. So yes, as a feedback loop. Thank you, Gilette. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or any comments? Other question, comment from the room? No one yeah, so was, go ahead. Sorry, for interrupting. Let me just check with the with the students from India. Abhiram, do you have a question or a comment you'd like to add? Yes, ma'am. I'm audible. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes. Yeah, you are audible. Ma'am, you were mentioning about the interconnectedness of platforms. So I just want to check that, like, is it uh, like the same? concept as stack economization that you're mentioning like uh, one economic activity created uh, uh, in a platform is laying the foundation for the other to occur 
so hmm. is that the interconnectedness that you are mentioning or is it something else um yes it's not necessarily uh, you know i think this is a concept that uh, kore has written quite a bit about right uh, the idea of stack economization and particularly the way in which it comes into play uh, in uh, the uh, the data money uh, and related platforms okay so there he sees it as a very causal sort of link uh, so you need one uh, activity to happen for the other to take place successively uh, here when i spoke about the interconnectedness of platforms um, i also thought of it it's not uh, in some cases yes uh, you know so for instance uh, perhaps you need to make yourself familiar with certain uh, financial platforms in order to be able to do some of the most basic things right so you have to have your internet banking or your uh, banking platform set up in order to be able to sign up for uh, for let's say a health based initiative on a platform or uh, you know uh, rescuing the loss of your data on something that was a, that started off as simply as you know sending email to people okay uh, so in that way yes is sometimes this is by design but other times this is also the way in which uh, platforms themselves grow and modify over time uh, i refer to both types of uh, connectedness uh, between platforms would you do you have a follow up abira no ma'am okay uh, just very quickly i want to check in on kalpesh as well kalpesh do you have something to add here or to ask no no ma'am thank you okay uh abinamba no ma'am all right i think we are all clear with the indian end so i think maybe while um people might be processing uh the talks we can talk a little bit about um the structure going forward and um you know where to look for certain resources okay i think that uh, probably we should also um, if there are no question and no debate uh, laura may you share the the schedule of our summer school like uh, share screen the schedule of the summer yeah. school we can make a brief introduction about uh, all the event we have planned it's okay for you gillet yes A moment and i'll share it Okay. Okay, here we are. I share my screen. Uh uh Pierre it says that you disabled the uh, No, I I haven't disabled but it's because you put me as a ah, host. Yes. Host, total host. So now you are co-host and uh, should work okay, go ahead. okay okay so this is today <laughs> enlarge it i'm sorry enlarge it Can you zoom it yeah okay okay great yes so um we've just finished this first first round and then we will see later on 3 p.m uh, italian time uh i think in india it was nine right Am I right? Okay. Nine a.m. in India with uh, Stefano Spillare from the University of Bologna. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Thirty p.m. Thirty p.m. Uh, ah, in case yes. the red, it's a red yeah, alert. That one, right? Yes. And um, yeah, he will talk to us about uh, civic food uh, networks, to networks uh, from networks to platforms, and yes, so we are really looking forward to his contribution as well. and just to add to um uh, add to this uh some of uh, the the faculty ha- are going to be sharing some reading material that they would like for you to read uh, ahead of the class so yes. we will be reaching out to you to share that yes we we'll send all the participants an email with the article that 
the articles, the materials that are suggested to be, re to be read before getting in the debate, so to alimentate it a bit more in depth, for sure. Yeah, and tomorrow we have Anne Kahn, uh, sorry, Cornelia Han <laughs> at uh, 10 a.m. Italian time, and then 12 a.m. We, we have uh, Gillette with, uh, so may you please pronounce it, Gillette, because... With, with Dr. Uh, Joanna Shalaka Jamacek from uh, NCU in Poland. Yeah, and uh, late in the afternoon, 5 p.m. Italian time, we will have Chris Bale from the Hook University. So um, just as a reminder, every afternoon we will send out uh, a newsletter with the event of the day and of the day before and eventually with reading material and uh, other stuff and useful information about our activity. We will promise you that we will not spam your email box it will be just one email on the late afternoon i mean italian time and uh, then uh, of course feel free to to jump in with any comment any any form of interaction would be much than appreciated to us we, we wish uh, this to be firstly a space of uh, sharing opinion and thought and uh, of course, give the insight for further analysis and, and research. And so feel free to, to join us also in our social channel. We have a website. And uh, so Laura, if you can share the screen and uh, show and display our website and, uh, and our future activity. And also we are also collecting, which is part of our activity a pretty rich uh, video section in which uh, you will find all the lectures we have had during the coming time. And uh, we have a very high and prestigious international scholar uh, giving their time and their reflection upon uh, platform society. And also we had uh, a, an amazing uh, international conference on blended, blended mood uh, a uh, couple of weeks ago, weeks ago, in which, uh, other than having an uh, interesting roundtable, we had also the precious contribute of Daniel Mill um, and uh, Sophie Mutzel and other prestigious scholar that you can find uh, available on uh, YouTube and in our web pages. So, Gillette, go ahead. I saw your hand rise. Please feel free. Uh, I thought this would be a good time to just check in with everyone um, in the, you know, the, the people who want to participate in the summer school. Uh, what kind of participation would they, uh, would help them to take really the most away from the summer school? Just to see what works for them, what doesn't like, you know, do they, do they want to work with all the cameras on? Because our intention was to actually have uh, the room function like a round table you know hmm. so where people come together and really have a conversation about uh, a topic so we just wanted to get a sense of what would what we can do to help you do this better uh, if there are any suggestions from you because i know this is like the first day just going forward i think it will help the, the sessions to move uh, to progress more smoothly also so i think that uh, our time is almost coming to an end so thank you everybody for attending the first lesson of our summer school. Uh, we will meet again today with uh, Stefano Spiller lecture later on and uh, hope you have appreciated it and uh, be in touch. Uh, feel free to contact us uh, about everything. We are glad of hosting this summer school and uh, see you then. See you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. See you. Bye. Thank you.